The East African Legislative Assembly has expressed concern over the withdrawal of regional forces from DRC. This comes on the eve of the deadline for the East African Community Regional Force to withdraw after Kinshasa declined to extend its mission. This Friday the 8th is the deadline for the East African community to withdraw its troops from DRC, which was deployed almost one year ago. The East African Legislative Assembly lawmakers have criticized the move, saying it will have a negative impact on the unity of the community. George Odong is a regional lawmaker from Uganda. You can see that our own partner states have no confidence in our own troops. Can the Council of Ministers tell us why the Democratic Republic of Congo has lost confidence in our East African standby force and thinks that the solution to their problems can come from outside? And yet, our integration, you know very well, is predicated upon collective security. The DRC's refusal to renew the mandate of the East African Community Regional Forces comes as Kinshasa announced that they failed to fulfill their mission, which was to fight the M23 rebel group that had captured parts of the Eastern DRC. Kennedy Mukulia, a regional lawmaker from South Sudan, says that the community is far from achieving its ultimate goal, which is the establishment of a political federation. Our partner states spent money to send our troops to the Democratic Republic of Congo. These troops, as we speak now, are withdrawing because their mandate has not been renewed and by one of our partner states. And we are talking about political confederation. Where are we going? Sources in East African community confirm that on Wednesday, the regional chiefs of defense forces were meeting in Arusha over a possible withdrawal plan of the troops from DRC. The DRC accuses Rwanda of supporting the M23 rebel group that has caused instability in the eastern part of the country. But Rwandan lawmaker Fatuma Ndangiza says it is not the M23, but the presence of largely Hutu FDLR rebels that is the root cause of the instability in DRC. For the FDLR, the people who committed genocide who are still in the DRC and are responsible for the ongoing conflict that is going on, including ethnic cleansing that is happening in that country, targeting people who speak in Rwanda. And these are matters of concern to East Africans. The government of DRC has declined to comment on the withdrawal of the East African Committee troops, but had earlier signed an agreement with the Southern African Development Community to deploy its troops to fight the M23 rebels. As the country is campaigning ahead of the presidential elections this month, the East African Community Regional Force announced on Sunday that it started leaving the DRC with the departure of Kenyan contingent. The DRC as a new member state of the East African Community. Analysts say that Kinshasa's integration into the regional body has been put to test by the ongoing insecurity in its eastern provinces. For Daybreak Africa... A Moses Javiarimana in Kigali. Several mine workers remain trapped on the ground in Zambia after a December 1st landslide flooded an open pit copper mine. At least 38 illegal miners have been trapped in the mine. According to Reuters, Zambian President Hakain de Hichilema visited the site on Wednesday and assured family members that the government is doing everything to rescue their loved ones. Information Minister Cornelius Mwitwa tells me five people were rescued on Wednesday, three of them dead and two alive. He said rescuers were working frantically to reach the others. The latest is that uh, from yesterday to today, five people have been retrieved, three are dead and two alive. So the search continues. Uh, The rescue team is working frantically to ensure that uh, these uh, people are rescued in whatever state uh, they are. And uh, true to the president's uh, encouragement, that uh, people are still alive. We have been able to see two being rescued alive. And our hope is that more of them are alive down there and they should be able to be rescued. Who owns the mine, first of all? The mine is uh, an artisanal mine where people are mining in an informal sector manner. They are mining without uh, proper uh, regulation, without proper uh, routine protocols to be followed. It is some kind of uh, artisanal mining 
mainly by the young people wherein they make a livelihood and they've been mining for a very long time. It's a tragedy that uh, it happened this time round when it had to rain when they did not anticipate. Otherwise, once it is rain season, they stop mining. But this time, as fate would have it, uh, they are caught up in this fate. But uh, this is something that is, has been happening and it anchors uh, their economy in the informal sector. Do we know how many people might be trapped under there? Well, the people who are trapped, uh, it's just an estimation uh, between 30 and 40 or thereabout, because as you would imagine that this is informal mining, there are no proper entries of who goes down to have their details and uh, get to know the numbers. It is just, uh, you know, the way they organize themselves. So there are no proper records of uh, how many people, but uh, according to hearsay, they should be between 30, 40 thereabout. Are these mines regulated by the government or what? They are not regulated by government. Uh, these are mines which uh, essentially are in a situation where, if you like, the government really uh, leaves people to do this kind of uh, mining, sort of uh, scavenging mining, and the government is not in a position to stop them uh, because they still make uh, ends meet out of there to scavenge you know, minerals and be able to supply to off-takers, and they make a living that way. What is the hope that uh, the remaining uh, miners can be uh, rescued? Well, with the speed that has since been attained, that uh, within 24 hours, five people have been able to be recovered, it is anticipated that going into tomorrow morning and thereafter, more people will be uh, recovered. The most part of the work that was quite inhibitive has already been uh, dealt with, uh, namely to remove the debris, which was about eight meters high, on top of the entry of the tunnel, which included uh, uh, some mud splash. A combination of rock, uh, soil, and uh, water, which had gushed into the the tunnel. So that has since been uh, dealt with. So the rescue team are now pursuing to follow through those channels, which are unconventional, like uh, not conventional mining, but uh, the local miners and who know uh, where they've been going are uh, helping the rescuers to follow through. And uh, this is work in progress and we remain hopeful. Cornelius Mwitua is Zambia's information minister. He was speaking with us from the capital, Lusaka. Cameroon's President Paul Bia on Wednesday welcomed Gabonese transitional president Brice Oliguiri Nguema at Yaounde for a short state visit. The Cameroonian leader is the latest to receive Oliguiri Nguema, who is on a tour of Central African state asking for the lifting of economic sanctions on his country before in the 20. 25th elections. Nguema said he and the President Ibiyar discussed this in their closed door meeting with some officials and how to boost economic ties between both nations. Nguema, who did not share specific details of the meeting, is reported by sources to have explained the reasons behind the coup and outlined the work of the transition he is leading up to the organization of the country's next democratic elections. The Gabonese strongman later met several hundred Gabonese civilians in Yehunde, where he justified his rise to power, vowing it was to improve living conditions in their oil-producing nation that was ruled for 56 years by the Bongo family. Gwema's two our closed door meeting with beer ends the tour which has taken him to Chad, the Central African Republic, Ekotolio Gini, and the Republic of Congo since he seized power in August. The general led a coup against Ali Bongo on August 30th, moments after Bongo, whose family ruled the West African state for 55 years, was declared winner of a presidential election, which the army and opposition declared fraudulent.